Hi there, this is Jerome from ProSoyTutorials and in this video I'm going to teach you how to create a free and amazing looking logo for your website the best part using a completely free software called GIMP I've been using this software for the past few weeks and it's really great it offers you a lot of options I would say that it's nearly as good as Photoshop but it's completely free you also have the link below in the description from this video so you can easily download this uh, software and just watch the rest of the video so you can learn how to create something really amazing for your website so stay there okay so currently I am in the back office from my WordPress website and the thing that you want to do is for you to actually add a new logo to your website you need to go over here to appearance and select header this really depends on the theme that you are using because some themes are actually different and you really need to look around so you can find the right place to add a new image for your your header in most cases is usually this section appearance header and once you come here you need to see the recommended sizes in this case it's 1038 pixels for width and for height is 250 pixels so I need to create something with those sizes okay so now I'm going to GIMP and this is how the interface looks like and if you just install GIMP very probably you will have uh, your windows appearing a bit different because I already changed mine anyway in this video I'm really not going in much detail with all of the options that you have and that you can use for editing your images I'm just going to explain the options that you really need so you can quickly and easily build a great looking image for your website anyway if you want me to actually create another video explaining all of the bases just post a comment below just saying hey Jordan I would like you to create another video or something like that and later on I will definitely create a video about that for now I just want to keep it simple okay so this is the interface on your left side you have your toolbox over here you have many different options for you to actually uh, change and edit your images which I'm going to explain a few of them later on on your left side you have many different tabs for example this one that I currently have selected is my layers tab this will uh, over here I can see all of the layers that I can work with this is uh, my undo history my channels below I have uh, this allows me to choose the colors that I want to work with this is my palette window this is my font window and this allows me to choose different fonts to work with this is my the window that allows me to choose different patterns for my greeting tool which later on I will show you and this last one allows me to change to different brushes and if you don't have one of these windows it's pretty easy you just need to go over here to this small arrow you click on it and you go to hat tab and once you have this selected you can see that you have over here many different tabs that you can actually have for example navigation just click on it and it appears over here if you go over here once you have your tab selected if you don't want it you just go once again over here select on it and you simply close tab and it disappears just like that close tab very simple okay this is just a brief explanation uh, about GIMP interface and I'm going to create a new uh, logo for my website so I simply go to file I select new and over here I need to add the the width that I want I currently I already have the width that I need and the height that I want over here it was 250 pixels okay so I'm actually going to do an image a bit bigger than 250 pixels I wanted it to be 300 pixels you can also choose the different uh, types of sizes you can use inches millimeters uh, but I, I guess if you are actually working uh, online pixels is just 
uh, easier for you to use. Also, you can choose templates, and this has uh, different predefined sizes that you can actually use. Okay, once you have over here the size that you need, you just press OK. And this window pops out. The first thing that you need to understand is that um, this software works with layers. That means currently I only have my background layer. But if I actually created a new layer by going over here to this void page, I select on it and I simply press OK over here, and a new layer appears. And this layer over here is on top of my background. That means if I just fill this layer with a color, my background disappears because this layer is on top of it. And that's pretty much how GIMP works like. Okay, the first thing that you probably want to do is simply reposition your layer so you can more easily work with it. So you have a few hotkeys that you can use. You can press Control. By pressing Control, you can use your mouse wheel if you actually have one. And you can simply zoom out or zoom in using your mouse wheel. If you don't have a mouse wheel, you can also go over here below and select a percentage that you want to zoom. Let's say 50%. And you can also reposition your layer more in the center so you can more easily work with it by simply pressing the space key from your keyboard. And when you press it, as you can see, it changes to a small cr uh, to a small cross and you can move your layer around to the center. This allows you to work more easily with your layer. Okay, so once you have everything uh, done, so you can start working with uh, with your new logo, the first thing that you want to do is create a background for it. I'm going to show you three different backgrounds that you can create. The first one and the most easiest one is to simply select this small but bucket. This will allow you to fill uh, your this white space with the color that you want. You simply go over here to this small square and once you click on it you can pretty much choose the color that you want over here. Let's say that I want a blue color. Okay so I go over here I choose a blue color like this. Once you have the color that you want you just press OK and you click on this white rectangle and it simply fills with the color that you want. You can also use, if you have uh, this tab open, you can also use this tab to choose the color that you want to use. Okay, this is the first option that you have for you to actually create a background. It's pretty easy. The other one is to simply use the gradient tool. So you select this icon that is right next to your bucket and you go to this tab, which is called Open the gradient dialog and you need to have this tab open so you can use it so if you don't have it you just go to this arrow you go to hat tab and you select gradients over here and it will open up and once you have this uh, this option open you can pretty much choose the different patterns the, the, the pattern that you want over here I want to use the, this one over here, so I'm going to select it. And I'm going to change the color. As you can see, it's currently going from a green to white. So for me to change the color, I go to this small squares over here. I select the first one. This will allow me to change that first green color. I want to use, let's say, blue. Okay. For you to change the second color, which is in this case white, I go to the second square over here and I select it. Let's say black. As you can see, it changed the two colors over here. So once you have the pattern that you want, you simply click on this window and you drag this small line in the direction that you want. And as you can see, this the pattern pretty much goes on the same direction as the line that you previously did. Let's say that I want going more down, I do like this. And once you have the background that you want, you just keep it. 
this is really a good option for for you to create a background a cool looking background for your logo the other one is for you to have an image and this is pretty much uh, one of the probably one of the most common options that people use to create a logo so if you don't have an image for your logo you can go for example to Flickr as you can see over here Flickr and you can actually find many images that you can freely use without any kind of restrictions on this website or you can take a photo from uh, from yourself or uh, from a place that you like and simply use that okay so once you have the image that you want you go to file and you open as layer and you go on your computer and find the, the image that you want to use in this case it's this one so I'm just going to double click it and it appears over here as a new layer as you can see over here okay now I want to reposition my my image so I simply go on top and I select this cross over here and I click on my image and simply drag it to the place that I want just like this Okay, so once you have your background done, you can add also some effects. I'm going to show how you can do that. For example, a cool effect is simply to add a gradient. So you select the gradient over here, and I'm going to put both squares white. I'm going to change my pattern to this one that is transparent. And I'm going to simply add this gradient to my image. And I will show what more exactly what this will do. You can see it will have this little light coming from this, this side. So you can pretty much just go around and see the different options that you have over here and play around until you have something that you like. This is just a little thing that you can do and it looks good. Okay, once you have your background done, you want to have your title. So you simply select this A and this will allow you to have some test. You go also to this tab over here below, open the fonts. So you need to have this tab open and you select the font that you want to use. And there are many fonts that already come with this software, but you can also find many free fonts online. For example, Prototype is a font that I found online for free. There are many different fonts over there so you can look around until you find something that you like and you select this say so you can uh, write some test and you simply click on the place where you want to write some test as you can see this window pops out you select the size that you want say 80 pixels and you go to this small square and select the color that you want to use let's say black and now you write what you want or say tourist like this once you have the test that you want to use you can also uh, you very probably want to reposition it so you go to this cross over here you select it and you simply you simply drag the test to the place that you want like this you can also have some effects by simply going to this area over here called filters let's say that you want to drop a shadow you go to light and shadows and you select drop shadow you select this and you can change this around the several things over here you can make your shadow less opacity or more opacity like let's say 75% like this once you have what you want is just press ok and as you can see a small shadow appears over here you can also reposition your shadow and always make sure that you are selecting the layer that you want to work with so if I want to work with my shadow I need to select that layer that is called currently drop shadow I click the, the cross over here once again so I can reposition my shadow and simply drag my shadow to the place that I want it to appear like this. 
Okay, now once you have your title, you probably want to have a tagline. So once again, you pretty much do the same thing. You click on this A and you write the test where you want. You put the size that you want your test to be, let's say 35 pixels, the color that you want, let's say black. And once you have that uh, defined, you write the test. In this case, you write the test that you want. Okay, making it a website. Just like this. So once you have the tagline, you can you can increase the size if you don't like it, and you just need to press Control A for this. Make sure that your your cursor is actually appearing over here on this test, and you just press Control A, and you can change the size like this, or you can also simply select everything with your mouth. Okay, so I have my tagline, but I actually want to reposition it, so I just check this cross. And simply drag it to a better place just like this okay okay so I already have a good logo for my website once you are done you want to save it so you go to file and you select export has and you go to the place that you want this to appear to save it in this case it's for say tutorials and you select make sure you select a name that you can actually remember new logo and also you can change the format by going to over here to select file type extension and you have many different extensions for your uh, for your image you can want uh, p p pack and I'm simply going to export it and this will allow me to save it with massive quality like this okay so once you have the image that you want you need to go to your website and you go to appearance header and you simply browse until you find your image and new Im new logo over here so once you have your image uh, select you simply upload it as you can see it appears over here you can increase the size by simply clicking this small square over here this allows you to simply choose the size that you want for your your logo you can crop it you can move the square around and so on until you have what you exactly want and you press crop and publish it I'm going to refresh my website and show you my new logo as you can see it appears over here the service making website has never been so easy and it looks really great so as you can see it's pretty simple for you to actually create a, a new logo for your website using this software called GIMP it's totally free and it really offers you many different options and that is all for this video but if you have any question just leave it on the co comment section from this video I hope this video has been helpful and subscribe uh, to my channel so you can get the latest updates from ProSite Tutorials so that is all bye and stay tuned with ProSite Tutorials